and we really need some more help. So there's two of these. I pass this around. This one is only one spot left, and that is for Saturday. Saturday noonish, uh, November 4th, next uh, week from Saturday. And this other one is the less. Well, this one has to do with peeling potatoes, and this one is the actual less uh, work itself. And there's some slots uh, for next Friday. may be seated. <coughs> and we continue with our Reformation litany and uh, a hymn medley of some familiar hymns and is based on Psalm 46. We begin. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore we will not fear, though the earth should change, though the mountains shake in the heart of the sea. Though its waters roar and foam, though the mountains tremble with its tumult, let's sing. There is a river whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy habitation of the Most High. God is in the midst of the city. It shall not be moved. God will help it when the morning dawns.
The nations are in an uproar. The kingdoms totter. God speaks in the earth melts. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Come, behold the works of the Lord. God makes war cease to the end of the earth. God breaks the bow and shatters the spear and burns the shields with fire. Be still and know that the Lord is God. God is exalted among the nations. God is exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. together let's pray our prayer of the day almighty gracious lord we thank you that your holy spirit renews the church in every age pour out your holy spirit on your faithful people keep them steadfast in your word protect and comfort them in times of trial defend them against all enemies of the gospel and bestow on the church your saving peace through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. As we sing Jesus Loves Me Together, I invite the kids to come up for the kids' message. So I brought a mirror with me today, and uh, what do you see in this mirror? Myself. You see yourself? Do you see yourself? You see yourself? Yeah. You guys see yourselves? Uh-huh. Do you see yourself in the mirror? There you are. Yep. <laughs> so when you look at yourself in the mirror, what do you think? How do you feel? So, so? You feel good. I'm glad you feel good. How come you might just feel uh, so so? Why is that? And, yeah? Yeah? Maybe you're a little tired. Yeah? Maybe you'd like to see yourself in the mirror looking more energetic. <laughs> well, I'm glad you said good because when God looks at you, God says, That's my buddy. That's my child. I love you. You know, some people look in the mirror and they go, oh man, I wish I had different color hair. I wish my skin would look better. I wish I was taller. I wish I had better clothes. I wish my eyes were a different color. And God says to us, he says, no, I love you just the way you are. 
You know, in the Bible, it says that God made us in his image, which means that uh, there's a big part of God in us. God lives in us with his love. And because God's in us, we want to be able to look at ourselves and realize and know forever that God loves us. God made me for who I am. God loves me for who I am. I am God's child. That's right. Um, Let's see here. If I hold this mirror up like this, do you see other people than yourself? Do you just see yourself or do you see other people? Who do you see? Just yourself or other people? Other people, right. So if we're made in God's image, well, that means that other people are made in God's image. And so when we look at others, God really wants us to love them for who they are too. Because God loves them. There's a part of God in every single person, even some kids we don't really like too much. We might think, oh, that person is really naughty. Well, I guess we're all kind of naughty sometimes, right? We do bad things. But all we need to do is, like with our parents, when we uh, do bad things, we want to come up to them and say, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. And when we say, I'm sorry to God, he makes us new and forgiven and even closer children of God. So kids, thanks for coming up. And remember, Jesus loves you. I hope you always remember that and that you treat other people in that same way. Thanks for coming up. You can go back to your seats. It's time for the readings. Now, as the second reading is read, come on up. Uh, the second reading is one of Martin Luther's favorite verses. And uh, that's when it dawned on him that there's a lot of church doctrines, but the three solas, the three major things, is faith alone, grace alone, God's word alone. And those things lead us to a personal relationship uh, with the Lord. Thank you. The first reading is from Jeremiah, the 31st chapter. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. It will not be like the covenant that I made with their ancestors when I took them by hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt. A covenant that they broke, though I was their husband, says the Lord. But this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will put my law within them, and I will write it on their hearts, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. No longer shall they teach one another or say to each other, Know the Lord, for they shall all know me, from the least of them to the greatest, says the Lord. For I will forgive their iniquity and remember their sin no more. The second reading is from Romans, the third chapter. But now, apart from law, the righteousness of God has been disclosed. It is attested by the law and the prophets, the righteousness of God through faith in Jesus Christ for all who believe. For there is no distinction, since all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. They are now justified by his grace as a gift through the redemption that is in Jesus Christ Jesus, whom God put forward as a sacrifice of atonement by his blood, effective through faith. He did this to show his righteousness, because in his divine forbearance, he had passed over the sins previously committed. It was to prove at the present time that he himself is righteous and that he justifies the one who has faith in Jesus. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thanks you, Aiden. I invite you to stand for the gospel verse. The Holy Gospel this morning is from John chapter 8. Glory to you, O Lord. 
Now Jesus said to the Jews who had believed in him, If you continue in my word, you are truly my disciples, and you will know the truth, and that truth will set you free. They answered him, We are descendants of Abraham and have never been slaves to anyone. What do you mean by saying you sh will be made free? Jesus answered them, Very truly I tell you, everyone who commits sin is a slave to sin. The slave does not have a permanent place in the household. The son has a place there forever. So if the son makes you free, you will be free indeed. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. Grace and peace to you through our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. Sometimes in life, we might feel as if we're going through a forest and the rain starts falling upon us and we become fearful and we wonder if we'll get home. But it's during those times that we really understand even more personally our faith, God's grace to us, and God's wonderful word that helps us to endure. Faith alone, grace alone, God's word alone. It was uh, several years ago, and uh, my family, we were camping at Good Earth Village, Bible camp near Spring Valley. Uh, you know, you can camp out there. Pastors typically, they uh, allow to camp for free overnight. That's a pretty good deal, right? And so we were doing that. And one particular morning, uh, my daughter Carly and I, Carly was one at the time or so, uh, we woke up really early. Or shall I say, she woke me up really early. So we had plenty of time before breakfast, and so we decided to go uh, on a hike. Uh, well, Good Earth Village is... Uh, acres and acres of forests and valleys and bluffs and a creek winding through the camp. And so uh, we set off. Uh, Carly was in one of those uh, 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 back, uh, backpack things for children, you know, back carrier on my back, and we started walking. Oh, it was a beautiful, beautiful morning. There wasn't a cloud in the sky. The birds were chirping. Carly behind me was uh, gooing and, and chirping herself and making all kinds of fun little noises. And it was a beautiful experience. Have you ever had one of those moments in life where you would like just to freeze time and have it last like a really long time? Mm. Well, we continued our, our walk. And when we got to about the halfway point, uh, time-wise, uh, it was time to go back. So I rounded the bend and started uh, walking back up at camp. Now, I looked up, and suddenly the once blue skies were suddenly very cloudy. And then gray clouds, and then really dark clouds, and then it started to rain. Go figure, right? It seems like it rains when we're not prepared for it. Doesn't that happen sometimes? But yet, rain and storms that might accompany it, it seems to be a pretty big theme in the Bible, in that rain and storms somehow bring out the character within us. Well, the rain started as little drops here and there. And then the drops became faster and faster and faster and bigger and bigger and bigger. And pretty soon, it was a clothes-drenching rain. Now, in the Bible, Jesus once told a story about uh, uh, two people. And he was talking about how to really enjoy the fullness of life. And he compares one man who built his house on sand. Now, that beach house looked pretty nice, right? Who wouldn't want a beach house? But Jesus said then that the waters came in and the storm came in and the sand shifted and the house collapsed. And almost as if representing people who don't take Jesus seriously, uh, don't take uh, Jesus' teaching seriously. And when storms come in, it's not as strong as it could be. Then he said, there's a man who builds his house on a rock. The storms come in. Now that house stays secure because it's built on a strong foundation. And Jesus said, that's the guy, that's the person who accepts 
who chooses to accept uh, Jesus and his teachings as the truth of God and the blessing for our lives. Yeah, it's, it does rain in our lives, metaphorically, and sometimes it rains a lot. So back to those drops, that clo- clothes drenching rain. And uh, at this point, uh, my daughter was okay with the rain, but once the clothes got all soaked and the wind became stronger and the trees started to shake and the thunder was uh, making big noises in the sky and the lightning was flashing, my daughter went from quietness to crying and then to uh, screaming and then to shrieks because she was so afraid. She was so afraid. You know, storms come in our lives, and sometimes we think we shouldn't cry. But, you know, crying is a major theme in the Bible as well. There's a lot of crying in the Bible. Well, take the Psalms, for example. The, the, there's a lot of Psalms about the people of God crying out to the Lord because uh, uh, something is happening to them, or they feel forsaken, or they're going through a really difficult experience. And in the Psalms, God always says at the end something very, very amazing. When you, are, when you feel forsaken, when you feel in trouble, when you feel like your clothes are soaked and that you're broken, remember, I'm listening to you. I am with you. Don't be afraid. Well, at this particular time, Carly is very, very much afraid because of this storm. Now, her reality, from her perspective, is the storm. She feels and sees and hears nothing else but the storm. And uh, she doesn't know how she's going to get out of this storm. Me, on the other hand, my reality, which she probably doesn't realize, is to get her home safely. I'll do anything to get her home safely. And uh, imagine, uh, years later, um, Carly is seeing a therapist... And she's talking about that infamous hike through the woods. And uh, then she comes up to me and says, Dad, why did you let that happen? Why did you bring me into the forest where there was a storm? Because, Dad, I'm all screwed up inside now. I got all this junk, and I just don't know how to deal with that. How could you let that happen, Dad? Now, I'd be shocked, right? Because for me... (laughs) That was the precious, most intimate time I had with my daughter. Because it was then that I could hold her close. It was then that I felt so much how she needed me and how I could take care of her. Jesus says, come unto me, all who are weary and broken, and I will give you rest. Sometimes we get this feeling that uh, to be... Uh, believers in Jesus that somehow we have to have it all together. It's a misconception. That somehow our lives have to be perfect. That somehow we can't have any doubts. That somehow we have to have this smile on our face all the time. But the scripture is pretty clear that God loves us for who we are. And when we cry out to the Lord, God will not forsake us. He says in Deuteronomy, I have carried you as a father carries his child. We did get home safely, by the way. But what I want to say to you this morning is that if you feel angry, if you feel broken, if you feel bitterness inside because of an experience that you went through, a storm that came upon you that you didn't expect, maybe you're feeling, why did God let that happen to me? I mean, if God loved me, why didn't he prevent that? Why, why, why am I so hurt by that? And God is saying, no. No, because it was through that experience I carried you. It was through that experience that I loved you. It's through that experience I I held you tight. You know, I took Carly out of the backpack before we got home because she was so scared. And I held her tightly. I hugged her. And she could feel my heartbeat probably and I could hear hers. And the rest of the way back to the, the tent, I would bend over and I would whisper to her, Don't worry. Don't worry, buddy. I love you. Dad knows the way. We're going to get home. Don't worry. In the same way, God embraces us in our difficult times when we go through storms. 
And he says in the most beautiful way, when you cry out to me, I hear you. Because crying out to God is the essence of salvation. I will hold you tight. It's through those experiences that I've whispered to you, you are my child, you are mine. So let that creator of the universe hold you tight when you feel broken, when you feel drenched, <laughs> when you feel uh, like you're in trouble. And hear those beautiful words of God. Because that is during those times when our faith is truly deepened by that grace of God through his word. Amen. Let's sing a couple of verses of Built on a Rock. Pastor Nessa is on vacation with her family, and I need to head out to R Prairie now to do that service. So uh, Pastor Norm uh, will lead us in our prayers and finish the service for us, yeah. and uh, with communion as well. So thank you. Very good. Do you think the power, yeah, the power is on? Yep, you're good to go. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, please stand for the prayers. Trusting in the transformative power of God's loving spirit, let us pray for the church, the world, and all in need. God, our parent, you call us your children and have made us siblings through your son, Jesus Christ. Heal the church's many divisions throughout the world. Bring understanding and peace where there has been contention and strife. And unite us in one body through the love of Christ, Lord, in your mercy, God, our creator, your hands have made the heights of the mountains, the depths of the sea, and the life that anima animates all creation. Bring relief to areas harm harmed by wildfires, floods, storms, and human carelessness. Renew the face of the earth and bless our farmers during this harvest time. Lord, in your mercy, God, our ruler, the nations rage and the kingdoms shake, but your word stands fast forever. Let your justice and peace roll down like waters wherever there is strife, injustice, war, or religious conflict. We pray for an end to war and violence in the Middle East and for aid and help to those who suffer. Lord, in your mercy, God, our champion, you are our refuge and strength, a very present in help in times of trouble. Draw, draw near to all who suffer. And now close to home, we lift up to you, John Hansen, Deb Bothan, Lana Bernard, 
Kendall Hamill, Cindy and Danny Bothan, Greg Bergen, Jesse Arnold, Dick Ask, Dick Fuller, and Rachel Finseth Gens. Blessed with comfort and hope those who grieve, Sharon Warden and her family in the death of Florence, and the family of Fran and Don, Donna Novotny on the death of her sister, Cindy Bothan. Be their rest and their comfort, Lord, Lord, in your mercy. God, our Savior, you made yourself known in the lives of all who have died in the hope of your grace. We give thanks for the witness of reformers like Martin Luther and for all whose examples has brought us closer to you. Lord, in your mercy. Gracious God, into your hands then we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your unending love and amazing grace. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Thank you. Let's share the sign of the peace with each other. Gotta have that mirror. <laughs> Announcements may be, uh, are printed in your bulletin and, and uh, you can read them. We encourage you to read them, but I wanna highlight a couple of them. Uh, one is the trunk and treat event for this afternoon has been canceled due to the weather and the minimal signups. And next Sunday is All Saints Sunday and we'll be lighting candles in memory of so many of our loved ones. Also, remember to change your clock back one hour. Spring forward, back, fall back one, one hour. And finally, there will be a free Veterans Day dinner on Wednesday, November 8th at six o'clock at the Joy Ridge Event Center, put on by the American Legion and Auxiliary. And they hope that veterans and their spouses or significant others can attend they need to RSVP by October 30th, which would be tomorrow. RSV for the veterans uh, event. And then one announcement I think is not in the bulletin is uh, the funeral service, our celebration of life for Florence Warden is gonna be this Tuesday, October 31st, Tuesday at 11 o'clock here. It's now time for the offerings, so we'll ask the uh, ushers to collect the offerings.
such beautiful words. I like them so much that we are an offering, not just things that we do, but we are in our, our lives offering to the Lord. Please stand now. Now for this prayer, Lord God, we give you thanks for all the blessings you have given us. Empower us to serve you and the church throughout our giving of time, through our giving of time, talents, and treasures. In the name of Jesus, amen. Now we celebrate Holy Communion, and everyone is invited. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it, and he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat, this is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And after supper, he took the cup, and after he had given thanks, he gave it for the disciples to drink, say, Drink of this, all of you. This cup is a new covenant. Not the old covenant anymore. This is a new covenant in Jesus Christ given and shed for you uh, for the forgiveness of sins and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. And let us join together in the prayer that the Lord taught us. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated and then the assistants can come forward and help with the communion servers. The communion will be served in front of the altar rail, standing down there, so you process forward. And For the used, glasses are in the baskets at the end there. given for you body of Christ 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 given for you, Hill. Body of Christ given for you. Lord bless you, Hill. Jesus loves you so much. He forgives you always. Bless you. Body of Christ given for you, Elaine. Body of Christ given for you, Richard. Body of Christ given for you. Body of Christ given for you. Body of Christ given for you. 
body of Christ given for you. Body of Christ given for you. Body of Christ given for you. Body of Christ given for you. Body of Christ given for you, Heather. Body of Christ given for you, Sarah. Body of Christ given for you. Body of Christ given for you, Joel. Body of Christ given for you. Body of Christ given for you. One guy way back here. Body of Christ given for you. And Pam, the body of Christ given for you. of Christ given for you. Oh. And blood of Christ shed for you. Yes, please. I must forgot. Amen. Uh, please stand for the blessing after the communion. The body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, which he has given and shed for you on that cross at Calvary nearly 2,000 years ago, and as he comes again this morning beneath these forms of bread and wine, may he strengthen you in his grace and your faith unto life everlasting. God's peace be with you. Amen. And receive the benediction. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and grant you his peace. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our closing hymn is Lift High the Cross, 660, verses 1 and 2.
Go in peace. Serve the Lord.